Welcome back, this is A-Level Computer Science 9618 and this is Chapter 7 Ethics and Ownership. Alright, so let's get started. So let's start with Ethics and Computing Professional. Ethics means right and wrong, you know, the moral standards that each and every person need to commit, you know, as a software engineer as, or, you know, or any other kind of profession that you are practicing, you need to act very ethically. Okay, which which is according to the rules and regulations which is beneficial to the society and for yourself as well so ethics that's the meaning of ethics okay so the moral principle that governs a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity okay so it's a moral principle these are moral principles that we need to follow so there are two other professional ethical bodies that we need to see okay so BCS is British Computer Society and it has four rules to follow so it should whatever you're doing it should be in the public interest so it should not be against in you know against the public interest the professional competence and integrity you need to practice your professional very ethically and very skillfully uh, giving your best and with integrity okay yeah very honestly duty to relevant authority giving a uh, competing your duty to a relevant authority okay duty to the profession Practicing your profession very ethically, and uh, eleven triple E is Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. So it has four, eight, at least eight rules to follow. Number one, public software engineers shall act out consistently with the public interest. It it must always be in the public interest. It, shall, it must not be against it. Okay, client and employee. Software engineers shall act in a manner that is in the best interest of their client and employee, consistent with the public interest. So, more like same thing but a little bit different. Three is product. Software engineers shall ensure that their products and, rel and related modification meet the highest professional standard possible. Okay. So we will use our profession very beautifully uh, with passion and ethically yeah? and we will try our best to meet the highest standard possible. Okay? It means that ensure testing, debugging and appropriate method is used for any project and any review of software and related document on which they work, giving your best. Number four, judgment. Software engineers shall maintain integrity and independence in their professional judgment temper all technical judgment by the need to support and maintain human values fear in decision making not being biased do not accept secret payment from the client okay number five is management soft engineers uh, soft engineering managers and leaders shall and leaders shall subscribe to promote an ethical approach to the management of software development and maintenance ensure that there is a fair agreement concerning ownership of any software process research writing or other intellectual property Number six, profession. Software engineers shall advance the integrity and reputation of the profession consistent with the public interest, which means undertake technological tasks for others only if qualified by training or experience. Okay. So you will all you will only undertake certain tasks if you are qualified or you have the experience to do it, right? Number seven, colleagues. Software engineers shall be fair to and supportive of their colleagues. To treat fairly all persons and do not engage in acts of discrimination discrimination based on race, religion, gender, disability, and etc. Okay, that's very simple common sense. We should do this every time in our daily life if you're so religious. Number eight, self. Software engineers shall participate in lifelong learning regarding the practice of their profession shall participate in the lifelong learning regarding the practice of their profession and shall promote an ethical approach to the practice of the profession like so for example if you're a software engineer or any kind of engineer you will try your best to learn more and more and become an expert in that profession try to make it um, becoming a pro right becoming a pro and the more you get the experience the more your value grows and, and the more your value grows the more people will give you better payment and you will do it ethically with no shortcuts okay so this is more like improving how you know you need to the way to improve yourself is to do it with ethically right so these are the eight laws of 
I triple E and these are the four laws of this VCS okay so it's very common sense and you will be asked you will be given the scenario about something and then you will be asked about that what does that what, what should the person should do about this and that so these these kind of question will come right so all the this this eight laws are just uh, more like an introduction or giving in a, a variance awareness and giving an idea that, that you know that you should do in this way the question the question that will come in the in the exam paper it will be given a scenario about something and you need to find it out that how that person should act, act ethically according to to these eight laws okay so moving on it's it's really not that difficult though it's really common sense so the next one is copyright legislation so copyright leg legislation when we create something unique like for example if i'm making a video then there should be a copyright right because it is my material my product i can do whatever i want it so it's the same thing here said so whenever we create something unique we have ownership of it right the thing that has been created is known as intellectual property copyright gives the owner the exclusive right to copy sell and develop so what happens what happened uh, that why do we you you know we we take we use the term copyright and where does these copyright laws came when when did it came it begins after after the development of the internet and world wide web many website offer free downloads of copyright music books film television program image and software the distribution is illegal unless the website holds the copyright of whatever is being distributed the website has the copyright of owner's permission no copyright exists if for example if the product if the material is open source then you can really easily use it and even try to uh, you know put on put on your videos and you can just sell it so copyright laws are those laws which you have the right to use it you to use it freely but you cannot use this for commercial commercial use you cannot just sell it right for your own personal gain so copyright issues software privacy making illegal copies of software is a major issue among software companies steps need to be taken to stop the illegal copying of software and to stop illegal copies being used once they have been sold but so what are the prevent preventive measures for this right product key security method used in software to protect against illegal copies or use when a software is being installed the user will be asked to key in a unique reference number we all know right for example if we are downloading a microsoft word ms word ms office and then you will be given a product key after you have purchased a cd right so this is the product key that we are talking about any kind of a uh, product key like for example if you are buying uh, online uh, adobe photoshop and you will be given the reference key and then you will use that reference key so it prevents you from copyright okay it's one of the most uh, one of the preventive measures that is being used widely used the user will be asked to key in a unique reference number or product key which was supplied with the original copy of the software okay terms and conditions uh, these are the you know, the terms and condition it came when I try to download an app and it says that these are the terms and condition please if you have read this then you know take the box and go on so these are one of the one of the ways one of the ways to secure your interest your work your you know your software it's it's one of the best methods for copyright to to solve copyright issues the user will be asked to click a button or a box which say that they agree to the license agreement before the software continues to install. DRM. DRM is used to control the access to copyright material. What is DRM though? It, the, its aim is to ensure that the, any attempt made to break the copyright protection will produce a defective copy which will not work. Okay. It is used to control X is it is used to control the access to copyrighted materials create restriction that control what the user can do with the data for example allow, allowing a music file to be streamed over the internet but not copied okay so this is drm and drm stand for digital rights management okay let's move forward now what we have here we are going to okay we are going to the license the type of license that we we have that we have been given or that we uh, we that we use to take 
like for example if you're purchasing any software so it's in commercial use if you are using a software free of charge but there's a copyright law issued on it then it's a freeware and shareware is uh, more like a trial version okay, this is a shareware commercial which means you will have to pay for it and then you can use it this is commercial this is shareware this is freeware and open source which means you can use it freely modify distribute copy it and you can even sell it for your own personal gain okay I mean just modify it and you can just set it you know free software are those software that we that the user have the permission to modify or change the code but they have one tiny restriction and that is that the source code for the modified version must be made available to other users under the same condition of usage which is known as copy left okay so let's read it commercial software example ms office or photoshop available to customer for a fee is for a fee providing a license for one genius to be used on a single device single device only none of the code can be used without the prior consent of the copyright owner the user must always pay before be being able to use the software okay this is commercial software shareware shareware which is made available on a trial basis for a limited time it's a commercial software they the you can the user can redistribute the software distributed free to user eventually either requiring or encouraging user to pay for the continued support of the software okay there's there should be no other unethical uh, intentions for sharing okay you are only using the doing this in order to encourage the other users to pay for the continued support of the software obviously so this is a shareware where you put a trial version this is commercial software where you give a fee and then get the license for it okay freeware is a limited version of a full package and there's no time limit for the license subject to a copyright law can download from the internet free of charge other often requires to take a box obviously terms and condition to safeguard the copyright laws to say that they understand and agree to the term and condition governing the software so these are there are so many example skype adobe reader yahoo messenger google on google play store you have so many apps you have no idea oh sorry you have the idea and you all have been using it for you know decades so this is freeware open source which means the user of the software is free to use it modify it copy it distribute it in according with the terms defined by the license you can just do whatever you want with it so this is open source it's some gold software this is what we are we all want to download it and just modify it and just use that code for you know and distribute it we have the freedom to do with this one free software focus on what the recipient of the software is permitted to do within the software if the software is modified for this if the software is modified, the source code for the modified version must be made available to other users under the same condition of usage, which is known as copyleft. This is only a restriction for it, and otherwise, open source and free software are quite similar because they both have the permission to modify and distribute it, right? And use it. The user can edit the source code and can redistribute the software. Now we have come to artificial intelligence AI. So what is artificial intelligence? Machine or application which carries out a task that requires some degree or intelligence when carried out by a human being. So these are there are three as there are three factors I think that yeah. Let's start with social civil unrest with large number of young people out of work. Okay. So if AI comes into the into the world or maybe it has already come but it's still developing it might took 40 years I think so this is 2020 and 26 in 2060 we would be getting you know automatic cars and you will get robots working for you doing the stuff for you you will get AI uh, robots talking to you to make a conversation you might get something like um, having a hologram of AI you know human form trying to talk to you or giving their history AI is a big deal it's a booming market
okay but what are the what are those factors that could i mean so in in social how would it affect it affect you know the uh, the people in the social factor right in economic and in environmental you know in these three uh domain how will it affect and how will it go so what are the benefit and tropics let's find out so there would be civil unrest with large numbers of young people out of work okay job opportunities could become very low but it could open new uh, jobs for others like for example if you want to repair the machine repairing the robot and you want to make a programming you know if you if you are a soft engineer then there's still some work left for you right so you know um very common work like uh, like in a restaurant becoming a waiter or like in a hotel becoming a receptionist these kind of jo- low low jo- low skill work could not be given to the young people who want to do very badly who want to do part time civil unrest with large number of young people out of work medium low skilled work okay it's all about that creating new job related to technology for human which which are high skill work okay an increase in ai will leave people with more time to pursue their hobbies and have a better lifestyle these two are the benefits for it these two are the benefits that uh, we have been talking and these two are the uh, this one is a you know the drawback okay so that's social economic if data is been is if data if data is only being used to enable the organization to increase its profit this could be seen as normal business practice if data is only being used to enable the organization to increase its profit so ai could do the job that's what it's telling you that having in a- having an ai to manage the data use the data you can easily make a profit huge amount of profit this could be seen as a normal business practice you know it could become part of a business so having an ai will change the banking system as well doing that ai will just do the dis- best decision for you based on the statistic or based on the data data that it has gathered gathered right so environmental issues robots are manufactured and require materials for their constructions all me- mechanical and electronic device eventually end up on a scrap heap contributing to the already serious problem of the waste product harming the environment and create and creatures living in this environment okay so these were some of the drawbacks the applications that the use of a language being a language translator or having someone to talk to carrying on the mathematical calculation of function okay there could be a math teacher ai math teacher recognizing a person's face okay face recognition definitely the ability to re- operate machinery okay anything re- which is related to machinery you can just operate it analyzing data to predict the outcome of a future event such as weather forecasting ai is a very cool thing so i i will consider all of you to start working on it it's a booming market okay so this is the end of this chapter so this is chapter 1 this was chapter 7 sorry ethics and ownership and in the next video we'll be going to chapter 6 thank you so much goodbye